All right, guys, now that you've uh, done your space relationship diagrams, the next step is to start developing those space relationship diagrams into an actual floor plan. The only way that we can develop a floor plan properly is to take each individual space and plan it out accordingly, uh, mainly with the required furniture and other elements such as plumbing fixtures uh, that might be needed in that space. Um, spaces obviously do not work unless they work with the furniture that is intended to go in those spaces. So it's very important that we kind of break down each individual space. And this is what is uh, phase two of your final culminating activity. I'd like you to break down the individual spaces and do a little bit of spatial planning uh, based on the furniture and requirements that you've been uh, provided with in the uh, final culminating outline. So I'm just going to give you one example of a space and how to go about planning it um, so that you can kind of uh, use this uh, ideology in order to uh, proceed with all of your other spaces. And I'm going to uh, simply go ahead and just kind of plan out um, the dining room. So the dining room, as we know, is obviously a space uh, that will uh, fit uh, a dining table. And in this instance, in your outline, the uh, cottage holds eight students. So you must uh, provide a table that allows for eight students to sit around it at one time. Um, so the best way to go about it is to research online the uh, size of the table. So you're going to have to do some research. So I'm just going to do a quick little sketch here. And I'm just going to sketch myself a table. And with that table, again, you're going to go on the internet and you're going to look for an eight-person table. So you're going to have to figure out what is the overall length of that table. And you're also going to have to figure out what the overall width of that table is. Obviously at that table, we have to sit eight people. So you're gonna have three chairs along the length and a chair at each end. Now, when we're sitting at a, at a table versus getting up and out of the seat uh, to remove ourselves from the table, obviously there's a uh, different space required for that. So if I have a boundary, say I have a wall or three walls, say this is part of my dining room, okay? What we have to do is we have to make sure that we allow enough space behind our chairs and around the table in order for people to circulate. If you've ever been to uh, someone's home where the space was really tight and difficult to navigate, um, it's obviously pretty frustrating. So in this particular case, what I would do is I would say, okay, so for instance, say this table was nine feet long and say my table here was three foot, six inches wide. The best way to go about doing something like this is to actually go um, to your dining table at your home, sit down in a chair and then push the chair back to a comfortable distance, get out of the chair and then take a tape measure. So when I move this chair back, the back of the chair might end up back here. Then take a tape measure and measure from the edge of the table to the back of the chair. And that'll give you an idea of how much space is needed to comfortably push your chair back, stand up and remove yourself from the table. Once you establish that distance, so just for argument's sake, maybe this is uh, two foot six. Okay, what this starts to do is it starts to develop what the minimum width of our dining room would have to be. So if this was an actual room, so let's just, for this lesson, you know, put four walls around this table, okay? So I've established that I need two foot six to pull my chair back. I've got three foot six here for my table. And if I have another two foot six, okay? This is the total space I'll need if I add it all up. This will be the total width required for my particular table in this room. So I have three foot six and two foot six, two foot six. I have five, so I have eight foot six. So eight foot six would be my minimum width required for this table. And then it's the same thing going the other way. So if I have two foot six and two foot six going this way, which is five feet plus another nine, then it means I have 14 feet of width, okay? So 
in this particular situation, that would be my minimum required space for that space. So when you go about planning out a bedroom, when you go about planning a walk-in closet, any of the spaces you would go through the same uh, methodology here in order to establish what it is uh, you need for an overall uh, dimensions for this particular space. One thing you have to keep in mind though, we have an Ontario building code requirement in this project for barrier-free accessibility. So people in a wheelchair. In this particular case, um, a person in a wheelchair should have the opportunity to travel amongst uh, around the space without any um, barriers. So in this particular case, what we're going to have to do is you actually from wherever the back of the chair is, and this can be when they're in a pushed in position um, or depending on if you have the space uh, when the chair is pulled out. But in the rules uh, in terms of our barrier free accessibility when you're planning your spaces, every space has to have what is called a five foot diameter turning circle. So somewhere in the space, I have to have a clear five foot turning space somewhere in that space. Doesn't have to be everywhere, but somewhere in that particular space, I have to be able to accommodate basically a five foot diameter circle. And this allows someone in a wheelchair to turn and change direction comfortably um, without any obstructions. The other rule um, that you'll need to consider is if we have a door that say entered this particular space, okay? As per code, the minimum door requirement for width is 36 inches. So every door that you have designed in your project must be 36 inches wide. Now, because we're not getting to using um, Revit or any software to do the design, you're just going to basically be sketching this by hand, your overall floor plan, which will be phase three. Once you get all this stuff figured out, um, you're just going to make a note that all doors are going to be 36 inches in terms of uh, your requirements. Um, any of the OBC, Ontario Building Code requirements, again, just make some notes on your plans um, with respect to that. So again, that's one key one, um, five foot turning uh, diameter in the space somewhere. So again, um, we have to provide seating at this table for someone in a wheelchair. Again, you can interpret that as this could be the spot here. So you'd remove a chair and that would be the spot for someone in a wheelchair to use that table. Um, but again, we're looking at providing a minimum of three feet of circulation space or what they refer to as egress uh, circulation space around this entire table. So either when those chairs are pushed in and someone's sitting at the table or when that chair is completely pulled back uh, between the wall and the back of the chair, we're looking at providing 36 inches or three feet. So when you're designing and you're planning this thing out, uh, key things to remember from an OBC uh, point of view, okay, for your barrier free accessibility is going to be your five foot turning diameter, 36 inches for any hallway width uh, or for any circulation path of travel uh, anywhere within the cottage and any doors uh, need to be 36 inches uh, wide as well. That's about it for now in terms of planning out the space. Uh, get yourself started, start planning out some of the spaces. And when you do have questions, uh, be sure to email me uh, with those questions and I'll get back to you as soon as possible on that. I'll do another lesson um, with respect to the bathroom design and barrier-free uh, design for a bathroom. But again, guys, we're limited to some points with respect to this uh, project. Uh, a lot of this can be figured out when we're working with the software. But for now, I just wanted to give you a little bit of the background and how to deal with this. And again, this method you're going to use on every single space uh, that you need to provide in this cottage.